It's called the dilemma zone, that time when a traffic light turns yellow as you are either approaching or going through an intersection. And many drivers insist yellow lights aren't timed right. Yeah, tonight, consumer investigator Steve Sprasia digs deeper into how engineers calculate the length of yellow lights and if it's long enough to keep drivers safe. We all know the rule to the road where a green light like this means go. But for many motorists, a yellow light like this means go even faster. But a yellow light can also get you a ticket, which means it becomes the superstar of traffic enforcement. Do you think yellow lights are timed long enough to go through? No, absolutely not. Yellow lights are based on mathematical calculations. Is to use between 20 and 30 for turns. State traffic engineer Kevin Lacey oversees more than 9,000 NCDOT traffic signals in this state. Yeah, the old adage is you see yellow speed up. Maybe I can make it, or maybe I can't make it, or I have to slam on brakes real fast. Scientists call this the dilemma zone because people have a hard time judging yellow lights. Once a light turns yellow in this area, drivers have to make a panic stop or hit the gas and race through the intersection. And when it comes to vehicles, fractions of a second can prevent or cause an accident. In the driving world, if you're doing 45 miles an hour, a tenth of a, a second is a little over six and a half feet. Traffic engineers say how long a light stays yellow is determined in advance based on speed limit, road conditions, driver judgment, and perception reaction time. At this point right here, this distance, and this is the calculated distance based upon that time, gives the drivers, they get to make a decision. I can go or stop. You think the yellow lights are time long enough for you to get through them properly? Um, if you're driving the right speed. But drivers running lights long after the yellow has faded away is a growing problem. We're not talking about, you know, half a second or so. We're talking about deep into the red. When they're running the red light after it's been red for two, three, four, five seconds. Here's what he's talking about. This light here is going to turn yellow. When it does, it'll stay that way for three seconds until it turns red. People are supposed to stop right here at this line. There's the yellow light. This guy goes through the yellow light. Now it's red and this guy is still going through well beyond that red light. The state tries to account for actions like that with what they call dynamic red lights, meaning drivers crossing intersections don't get the green right away. I have all red for one to two seconds, and that's to clear the intersection. But let's say you're in the middle of the intersection and your yellow light suddenly goes red. If you enter the intersection on yellow, then you have the legal right to clear. But there's a difference between going straight through an intersection and making a left or right turn. For the last couple of years, this Oregon man has been fighting with the Institute of Transportation Engineers. That's the group that sets traffic light standards. He claimed yellow lights in his state were mistimed so that turning drivers didn't get enough time before the light went red. In October, the Institute said he was right, and their engineers would study the turning situation at yellow lights. So does his complaint have any validity here in the state, or do we do things different? Well, we actually do things slightly different. Lacey tells me that our state does follow most of the ITE recommendations, but about 10 years ago, North Carolina adopted a different timing calculation for drivers who were turning, giving them a bit more time. According to federal regulations, all yellow lights must be no less than three seconds and no more than six seconds. Are you ever worried about having an accident as you roll through that yellow light that's turned red? Sometimes. Lacey says if ITE reworks its formula for turns and it turns out to be better than what NCDOT currently uses, the state might adopt it. Not everything that you can calculate down to the nth degree is practical to apply in, in the real world. Working for you, I'm consumer investigator Steve Sprachan.